How's it going, guys? So this question is going to provide you some value in the sense that the presentation is slightly unusual, okay? However, it's assessed on the NBMEs for step one, so it's something you need to know. Before we get started, how about I be an outrageous asshole, tell you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, hit the like button, I really appreciate it, hit the bell if you want notifications, and also find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical, link is also down below. Now, how about we get into the actual question? 32-year-old dude, he's got general malaise, rash, blood in his urine since commencing antibiotic for skin infection four days ago. Temperature, 100.2 Fahrenheit, mildly febrile. Urinalysis shows 3-plus blood, 1-plus urine, 120 leukocytes per high-powered field, 25% are eosinophils. What's the most likely diagnosis? So let's just go through our answer choices here sequentially. Choice A, acute tubular necrosis, wrong fucking answer. The reason this is the wrong answer is because we have eosinophils in the urine. You're not going to have that with acute tubular necrosis. We would have muddy brown granular casts, uh, dirty brown granular casts. Also to note that acute tubular necrosis, when we consider how, how do we treat skin infections, classically oral dicloxacillin, one of the methicillin class beta-lactams or first generation cephalosporins such as cephalexin, Acute tubular necrosis, classically aminoglycosides, such as gentamicin, tobramycin, amikacin, it's not how we treat skin, okay? We can do a long microbiology and pharmacology discussion. We're not going to go that route. But the point is, you're not going to have eosinophils in the urine with acute tubular necrosis. ATN can also be due to things such as uh, IV contrast when the patient's not well hydrated, rhabdomyolysis because myoglobin is nephrotoxic, also acute ischemia, uh, classically ventricular fibrillation, or exsanguination, uh, acute blood loss, like during surgery, okay? Choice B, IJ nephropathy, wrong answer. This is going to be a URTI, upper respiratory tract infection, for one to two days, followed by red urine, or a GI infection for one to two days, followed by red urine. Now, students trip this up with PSGN, okay? So I'll give you two scenarios real quick. 12-year-old boy, sore throat, one to two days, red urine, answer, IG nephropathy. 12 year old boy, sore throat a week ago, one to two weeks ago, red urine, PSGN, post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Okay, don't fuck that up. Also, 12 year old boy, sore throat, nephrotic syndrome, no blood in the urine, minimal change disease. And often for minimal change disease, viral infection, completely asymptomatic. All right. But 12 year old boy, sore throat, red urine one to two days later, as I said, that's IG nephropathy, nephritic syndrome. Okay. Uh, and also, IG nephropathy is part of Henox, Shonley, and Purpura, all right, a pediatric condition. Uh, so, red urine, IG nephropathy, uh, palpal purpura on the uh, buttocks, thighs can also be in the trunk. I've seen it, arthralgias, and abdominal pain. Uh, choice C, interstitial nephritis. This is the correct answer because we have eosinophils in the urine, usually allergic. Okay. So, beta lactams, cephalosporins, NSAIDs. We said beta-lactam cephalosporin, classically how we treat skin, plus eosinophils in the urine. This is interstitial nephritis. And, and rash can be seen in about half of questions. Now, why did I say that this is slightly unusual, this question? It's because we have blood in the urine. That's not typical. Okay, that's not typical. But this is asked on the NBME for step one. It's because the other answers are wrong as we're eliminating them, as we're doing right now in combination with the rest of the presentation is very textbook. Apart from the blood, we literally have eosinophils in the urine, a rash, someone who had beta-lactam cephalosporin, okay? Uh, that's interstitial nephritis. And the blood is unusual. As I said, it's on the NBMEs. So interstitial nephritis, also known as interstitial nephropathy or tubulo interstitial nephritis, this can also be uh, due to uh, obstruction, okay, a ureteral obstruction. That's on one of the NBME exams. It's not allergic in etiology, but you can still get a diagnosis of interstitial nephritis due to uh, obstruction. Choice D, membranous glomerular nephritis. This would be the answer for dapsone, gold salts, or penicillamine. Penicillamine, not penicillin, okay? Penicillamine is a copper chelator. Uh, can also be used uh, in rheumatoid arthritis, apparently, which is how it was described in one of the uh, uh, old NBME vignettes. Um, 
membranous glomerulonephritis is nephrotic syndrome. It's not nephritic. You're not going to have blood in the urine. Okay. Spike in dome appearance on biopsy it can be due to solid tumors such as uh, pancreatic, lung, breast. It can also be due to hepatitis, like Hep B, Hep C, classically Hep B, but I've seen a Hep C as well. It can be primary antibodies against phospholipase A2 receptor. Okay, but uh, here it's the wrong fucking answer. So choice E, renal papillary necrosis. This is going to be the answer when you have a patient with sickle cell anemia who has dark urine. If you have sickle cell plus dark urine, answer renal papillary necrosis. Sickle cell plus nephrotic syndrome, answer FSGS, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. The renal papillae are part of the medulla of the kidney, receives decreased blood flow, so they're susceptible to slothing uh, due to ischemia. So renal papillary necrosis can also be due to NSAIDs, okay? So dark urine with renal papillary necrosis. A lot of you can chat about, okay? I know you don't want to see 17-minute clips, so I hope this appeased some students, but as I said, it's value because blood in the urine with interstitial nephritis asked on the NBME, but otherwise unusual. So I'll make more clips. You know the deal. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate your time. That's it.